Hey everybody and welcome to harvesting my copepods and phyto. These are the two tanks that I'm using um, from Poseidon Reef Systems and you can see that there's two very distinct different colors. One on the left, copepods. One on the right, phyto. And what you're going to want to do when you set these up, and we'll go through that later, is dose each tank with 250 milliliters of phyto. Well, when this started, these were both the same color, but the copepods eat the phyto, so that one's significantly lighter, and because the phyto's been reproducing in the right tank, it's a much more vivid green. This is my workstation. I don't have a whole lot of room to maneuver, so this is what it is. I'm trying to make things as sterile as possible. We got some beakers. We have some salt water at 77 degrees. We've got my ace bucket with a um, with the sieve, um, a very large glass Pyrex measuring cup, and we got the instructions right here printed off from um, the PDF from Poseidon. And so let's get to it. I'm gonna start here by sterilizing a few things. Um, so there we go. I'm gonna grab my handy dandy microfiber here. And we got some 70% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm gonna start with it on my hands. Okay, I'm all ready for surgery. And then I'm going to give this microfiber towel a little bit. And I'm going to go over the rim here, over inside. Don't want to use it too much because it will harm the, the phyto and the copepods. So I want to just give it enough to sterilize, not enough to linger. It's going to be a minute before I use this, so um, hopefully the, it will dry out by then and let's just do all of them I don't know if we're going to use every one of them this is my first time going through this and so I'm hopeful that I do things correctly now one of the things I did notice that I forgot to bring down here is a sealable ball jar that I was going to use to store my extra phyto because I plan to dose the copepods, any extra copepods um, in the tank right away. I'm not going to dose all of the phyto right away. Um, so I'm feeling good about those. Let's go and get a ball jar. So you can just look at those brilliantly blue green tanks as I head upstairs to snag myself a jar. And I do have something new coming from Poseidon. And that something new is going to be a set of sealable bags along with a heat sealer so that I can put them in little spouted bags and store them much, much easier. They'll be nice and sterile. So here we go. We have ourselves a jar. I might need a couple of jars, but we'll start with the one. And same deal, let's get this wiped down with some isopropyl. Hopefully my hands aren't too big. I will make do with this. Get it all over. And let's get the lid. All right, I think we're in somewhat of good shape here. So that there is ready. All right, next thing we want to make sure we have on hand is these a couple of bags because we don't put the fluid directly into this because it makes cleaning a pain in the butt and they are not you cannot dunk this entire thing into water so we're going to use a couple of these bags 
We're going to need two of them because we're going to be replacing them in both the Fido and the Copepod cultures. Uno and those. All right, we got two. Um, we're also going to be replacing some of the hoses and whatnot, but we'll pull those out here in a little bit. All right, so step one is I need 500 milliliters of phytoplankton so that I can restart my phytoculture with 250 milliliters and I can restart my copepods with 250 milliliters of food for said copepods. So let's go ahead and turn off the bubbler. There we go. Bubbler has been turned off. And this is not a screw top. We just pluck it off like this. All right. And we'll throw that right on the towel here. And I don't know how pouring this is going to work. So let's grab our 500 mils right away that we're going to be using to restart our cultures. I kind of want to give this a little bit of a shake up because there's going to be some stuff on the bottom here. And so let's grab this and just give it a little agitation. And oh, we're all right. And let's grab our 500 mil. Let's make sure that alcohol is evaporated. I'm not smelling any. So I think we're in okay shape. I'm going to unplug the light here. Make things a little easier on myself. So I'm not tethered to any cables or cords. And let's see how bad we spill this and how much we actually get in the beaker. Here we go. There is 500 mils of phytoplankton ready to go. I'm going to dose the tank right away. So I'm gonna grab 250 mils just for an immediate dose into the tank. That's a nice green color, isn't it? So we have our 500 mils to start our next cultures and we have 250 mils that are immediately going to be added to the tank. So we will throw all of those beakers over here. All right, and the rest of it can be stored for later. Um, this should last, an active culture will last uh, up to 90 days in the refrigerator. So should be good to go in case my culture crashes, I should have some backup. So let's go ahead and fill our ball jar. Did I grab a big enough ball jar? I did not. So we're gonna go on adventure back upstairs and grab another ball jar. All right. Now I don't want to pour the phytoplankton directly into this ball jar right away. I'm going to need to wait a couple minutes for the alcohol to evaporate off. So in the meantime, we will reread our instructions on how to do the copepods because those are a little more in depth than we would typically, or than phytoplankton typically would be. So got another ball jar, got to give it a good scrub. These ball jars, by the way, are excellent for refrigerator pickles. All right. Let's grab our microfiber towel. Give it some alcohol. And here we go. Gosh, I just love the color that this phytoplankton culture has made. It's so good. All right. You know, you would think I would have done this with these jars prior to starting the video. I thought I had everything squared away and I didn't. So it is what it is. Maybe through the magic of editing, I can edit my 
trip to the kitchen. But I stink at editing, so probably not. All right. Let's get a little, let's get a dry cloth in here, see if we can't expedite our process of this drying out. All right. Get that set. So when we do our copepod harvest, there's a couple of steps we're going to want to do. Um, one, it's got a pod nest in here that you'll see. Um, we're going to want to fill this beaker up with probably, I'll probably do around uh, 600 milliliters of salt water. And we're going to rinse that pod nest in this beaker. Um, and then we're going to put it in one of these bags to start our next culture. And then we're going to pour everything through a nice sieve, um, which I'm going to grab over here. All right. And since we're waiting for the alcohol to dry in that ball jar, I'm going to grab my 1.025 salt water and toss it in here. How many mils did that go? Almost exactly 600. Hey, it's like I know what I was doing. Don't let that fool you, because I do not. All right, so we got 600 mil of 1.025 salt water right here. And let's give this a smell, see if it smells like alcohol. Nope, I think we're in good shape. And let's pour the remaining Fido right in here. All right, next time we know, we need two of these bad boys. So we'll go ahead and throw the lid on so I don't inadvertently spill it, which is very high odds. All right, two jugs of Fido for the fridge here in a little bit. Now we'll take our bag from here and discard it. So that is garbage. That can be thrown away later. And we'll restart our culture here shortly, but let's take care of our pods first. So, number one. Let us remove the lid. All right, now let's remove our pod nest from here. And they want us to dunk and dunk and dunk. Dunk and dunk and dunk. I'll set this right here. All right, and then we're gonna put that in a brand spanking new culture bag that we have right here, ready to go. Hopefully we got just a ridiculous amount of Tisby pods. Hmm? All right, and you go in here. All right, now what it wants us to do is pour all of the water from that through this sieve here. So let's do that. Okay, that has been done. Now it wants us to pour all of the remaining copepod culture from this bag through the sieve. I'm going to do that on the floor um, just so I don't do anything silly. All right. Copepod culture. Let's go through the sieve. Okay, and we will then take the bag and add 500 milliliters of freshly mixed salt water to the culture bag, shake it vig vigorously. So that's easy enough to do. We're going to do about 500 mil. That's pretty close to 500 mil. Pretty close, right? 
Let's toss that in the bag. And we'll give it a shake. Stirring up some of that phyto that was on the bottom that had settled out. So. All right, that is another bag that can be discarded. All right. Now, one thing I want to look at here, I want to look at our sieve. I want to see if I can see anything. By the way, this is how I got it on the Ace Hardware bucket. I just used a permanent marker, drew a line around it, cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Hmm. Took all of about a minute and a half. I can see lots of detritus and phytoplankton, but it's definitely a challenge to see. These are some very, very, very small pods. So I do have a magnifying glass on the way and I might get a microscope to see if I can see anything. But um, now what we wanna do is we wanna invert this and pour about a liter through to get everything off the sieve. So let's do that. Got my bucket of salt water. And this is the worst ever. Pyrex, it, it, it does not pour well. I will have all of you know, avoid this giant glass or Pyrex measuring cup at all costs. Um, I'm running out of space, so I'm gonna go down below. Glad I put towels down here because I'm spilling like crazy. Okay, there we go. Sieve done. And let's see if I can see anything. I see lots of things floating in there but I can't really see anything moving yet because, well, things, everything's moving in there because I just poured through it. So I need this to calm down so that I can just look and see, do we have, oh, there we go. I think I might see some movement. I'm old, so let me take off my glasses here. Yeah, I feel like I need a magnifying glass. Now, when I when I got the shipment and, and Poseidon uh, Reef Systems, they're really cool. Um, I let them know right away that the, the cooling block in there had uh, reached room temperature when I received it. And it's not their fault. It's the mail where I live is quite late, frequently, by days, not hours. And so I, am, I uh, have a little bit of a fear that um, the pods may have arrived DOA because they overheated. But based on the water color, unless, it was, unless all the 250 mils of Fido I put in there had settled out, causing the water to lighten, I feel like we have pods. I just can't see them because they're tiny little guys but I'm not seeing any movement beyond what the natural eddies and stuff in the, the water from it cooling and whatnot. I'm not seeing anything kicking around. Um, microscope's on the way, so hopefully we'll see in this next culture um, what we get, but, or magnifying glasses on the way, not microscope. So hard to say. Lots of floating particulate matter. Um, I'm just going to cross my fingers and, and hope my eyes, my old eyes, just aren't good enough to pick up that movement and that we have a, a nice uh, set of pods. 
So, um, if you don't see a lot of pods, do not remove them and let the culture mature another week. I think that's what I want to do instead of adding them into my wreath. I think I want to do a whole new culture with everything that's in here. Um, right now my reef's a very, very new reef. Um, therefore, I don't have a huge amount of need for pods just yet, so I'm okay with letting this sit. So let's start a new culture, shall we? I think we shall. All right, first things first, we got a lot of work to do. So let's get things dried off. I'm not going to replace any of the airline tubing um, quite yet, but what I am going to do is replace this blue tubing. And sometimes this blue tubing can be a little bit of a jerk. So let's grab this. And we need a little guy here. All right. Now we do, we have a couple places we need to sterilize. Um, and this one. How long are you? Okay. So let's grab our, let's not knock these pods over. That would be quite irritating. All right. So let's grab our microfiber here. And, all right, let's make sure we get this nice and sterilized here. Okay. Please dry. And we're gonna do each one of these tubes individually. actually don't need this one until we do Fido. So that one's going to sit over here for a minute. All right. Now we take our freshly sterilized tube and we, this is our breather. There we go. That's all the way in. And I'm going to grab our pod nest here and yoink its tube. Maybe. Huh, maybe that one is not meant to come out. I'm not sure. Um, that's interesting. Or maybe I just didn't pull it far enough. There we go. That's, that's what I'm talking about. All right. This one, freshly sterilized. Or as sterile it. That was interesting or as sterile as it gets in a house with two boxers. All right, so we are going to attach this to the underside of the middle where the bubbler is. So that is gonna feed our bubbles right through there. By the way, we have our bubbles tuned. Um, for about between three and five bubbles per second. Let's get our pod. <coughs> Let's get a pod nest in there. Um, now this is really working hard to make it somewhat awkward, but hopefully when we pour everything back in here, we'll be in good shape. Um, I don't see movement in here. Let's grab a bright flashlight and see if that will help us see some movement. So we're looking for a bright flashlight. Bright flashlight one and two, all right. And here we go. 
Let's see if we can see anything. Everything seems pretty still, gotta say. See the detritus on the bottom? Do we have any movement throughout that detritus? This flashlight might be too bright. No, this one's not bright enough. That's a little better. It's really hard for me to tell, folks. I gotta tell you, I'm not seeing any movement whatsoever. These buggers are tiny, so. I don't know, let's give another culture a go and see if the Fido disappears really fast, I'll know that they're eating up the Fido. So let's start by adding this leader back in here rather than into the tank see this pours so nice compared to that giant pyrex measuring cup that pours so poorly ah <laughs> pours poorly look at me go all right and then let's give this a swish because there's there's definitely still some stuff left in the bottom make sure that we're getting everything Okay, there we are. And all right, let's fill this back up. I just love the speaker. And before we go too much further, let's make sure we have room um, for the 250 milliliters of Fido that we plan to add in here to feed the pods, assuming they're alive. All right, let's need to get down to 250. A little more. More. Bingo. Now what we're looking to do here is fill it up to the trident line right here. So right there is the trident. That's where we're looking to fill to. All right. And where are we? We can use another few hundred mils of salt water. That looks almost perfect. There we go. All right. And now we are going to toss our lid back on. We're going to plug it back into our light. The light is already dimmed to 50%. Okay. And we'll wait to turn our bubbler on. But when I look at the color in here, after adding the 250 mil of Fido, it's not as green as I initially remembered it. So maybe my Fido that I harvested here was not as dense in Fido as perhaps the, um, the sample that was sent. But when we get done with this, I'm gonna take a picture of it for reference so that I can see if it is lightening up day over day. All right. So now we are on to restarting our Fido culture. We know that's growing. That's no joke. And let's not break it right away. All right. This one should be a little more straightforward. So let's get things dried off. Let's get our tubes out. Okay, 
tubes are out. Okay, we still should have a bunch of alcohol. Yep, it's still nice and wet. Let's give this a quick go around. All right. And let's sterilize two new tubes. So all this stuff, um, minus the, you know, the beakers, the flashlight, the alcohol, um, that all, everything came with this system from Poseidon. The tubes, the culture bags, the, there's micro pipettes, um, the air bubbler, the air hose, the air filters, um, the, the valves to adjust the bubble flow. And uh, it was ready-made system and, and the cultures. Um, like I said, I think the culture that I got got a little bit warm. Um, this, this, this here will be the test um, to see if they are still living. I expect if a bunch did grow over the last seven days that they should be able to eat down all the Fido that's in here in the next seven. That would be my expectation. All right, so let's go ahead and get this bag down in here. All right, and we will add some of our, where's my big beaker? There it is. We'll add a liter here. All right, then we're gonna add our culture starter, which is the remainder of what remains in this beaker. All right, I'm gonna pour some water in here just to make sure I get every last drop that I farmed. Is it farming? I mean, they're plants, right? No? Animals, animals, ranching? Am I phyto ranching? Um, all right. Oh, thank goodness for towels. I am an awful poor. I'm blaming Pyrex. Okay, we just need a tad bit more. There we go. And when that bag spreads out, we'll be just about perfect. All right. Let's put our lid on. Does everything look dry? There we go. Let's toss our lid on there. All right. And then let there be some light. Here we go. And if you remember at the start of the video, we had a brilliant deep green in our right tank. And right now the, the light is much stronger in the right tank as intended. The, the Fido tank gets 100% light, whereas the Copepod tank gets 50% light. And I mean, just, just look at this. That's what 250 mils a phyto looks like in that much water and that's what it looks like when it grows for a week so that's what it took to harvest my copepods and uh, hopefully we did get a copepod harvest um, we definitely got a phyto harvest so next time I'll report on if the copepods lived or not thanks everyone